Hi YouTubers, I'm El Gracian from elbowpepper.com. Today I've concluded a month-long experiment comparing these two different LED grow lights and I'm going to share with you the results. Have you ever heard of Crack Key's method of hydroponics? Well, we're also going to get a quick look at it today as well. So I look forward to sharing this with you, but uh, first, let's take a better look at these grow lights. I'm comparing a 109 watt SMD grow light with an 84 watt COB style. To the right, the 109 watt is sold by Apollo Horticulture. This UFO is marketed as a 180 watt or 60 times 3 watt. To the left is my 84 watt light sold by HHE. At first they were calling it 200 watt, but now they've designated it as a 64 times 3 watt. I've been testing these lights in a veg cycle, growing lettuce. The Apollo light consumes 30% more power. Will it produce a 30% increase in yield? Or will the efficiency of the HHECOB allow it to keep up? Now let's take a look at the test bed and see how I set it up. These lights are being run side by side, hanging within separate chambers. Each chamber is about 30 by 30 inches, with foil on three sides and an open front. Each light is exactly 15 inches from the bottom of the light to the growing surface. I'm using a 17 hour light cycle for this test. We're growing nine lettuce plants on each side within a 24 inch by 24 inch area. The lettuce variety is called Tom's Thumb, and I started the seeds in vermiculite, which I then transferred to these peat-based plugs called Rapid Rooter, and I placed these in two-inch net cups and stuffed some coir in there as well to finish filling up the cup all the way. These plants were grown in trays with identical nutrient solutions, and this was Crack Key's method of hydroponics that I used. That required the use of no pumps, and I didn't have to replenish the nutrient solution either. For you hydro nerds, here are the details of how I set this up. Now I'm going to have a video that talks more about this at a later time. But for now, let's take a look at how the lettuce growth progressed over the course of 23 days. Right away with the lights side by side, I could see a distinct difference in the light characteristics. The HHE light was more blue and that would boost the vegging growth, you would think, because of having more blue light. The Apollo light claims to be full spectrum, and you can pick up some of those whites in the light. This made it seem a little more well-rounded in the spectrum. What I was surprised to see was the difference in light dispersion. My Apollo manual said to place the light between 24 to 48 inches away. That seemed a little bit far to me, so I went for 15 inches, which wasn't too bad, but the center plant was stressed a little and showed some inner tip burn. So for the next time, for the lettuce, I would probably try around 18 inches. Now in regards to the COB style light from HHE, it has a much narrower view angle and the light doesn't spread nearly as well. The plant in the center was bombarded by an incessant beam of photons, which severely stunned it. Meanwhile, the plants in the corners were slightly deprived of light. What could be done to remedy this issue? Increase the distance. For the HHE COB, I would probably try 24 inches and then go from there. Does this seem a little counterintuitive to any of you? How many times have we heard LEDs make way less heat so you can put them really close to the plants? Well, UFOs and COBs require a certain amount of distance in order for you to actually get even coverage over your desired area. What about panel or strip LEDs? They seem to work better in spaces that don't have much vertical room. So you'll want to consider this if you're using a multi-shelf system or under a cabinet grow space. Well, look at this. Our lettuce is done growing and it's finally time for harvesting and weighing. But before I do that, 
Let me just show you a quick close-up of these plants so you can really see how they developed. Some of these plants are actually showing some very nice growth. In general, the Apollo light provided more uniform plants. This center one did have some inner tip burn. Let's look at these roots. As for the HHE plants, this center plant shows severe tip burn and stunted growth. But look at how these corner plants have just a little less density as well. Here are the roots on these plants. Alright, so the main thing for me to do here is to just go through all these plants, focusing on just the top growth for establishing the weight. Now all we have to do is tally up the numbers and see which light is the winner. Okay, math nerds, you ready for some data analysis? First, let's look at the individual plant weights for the tops of the lettuce. These aren't dried, these are just freshly cut. And this is what the HHE plants yielded. So, for the total weight, we're looking at 23.65 ounces among the nine plants combined. All right, now let's look at the Apollo. How did it measure up? It consumes 30% more power, but of course it's that SMD style, not the COB style light. And it wasn't quite as blue just to visually look at it. Hmm, interesting. We're getting some higher numbers here. When you total it all up, it's actually 29.9 ounces, which is a 26% increase in plant mass. So we're pumping in, we're consuming 30% more electricity, and we're getting and yield increase 26% more yield. This is the exact same distance away. These are the same basic type of technology in that they're LED lights and that they're grow lights with custom tuned spectrums. And yet more power is yielding more growth. It seems to be a direct correlation at least based upon the data that I've gotten from this test. So, what can we really take away from this? If you're in the market for an LED grow light, either of these lights will certainly work. The HHE is much quieter. It's lighter and not as wide. It uses less power, which can save you money, but only a couple of dollars a month at most. And that reduced power will reduce your growth. The Apollo light, offers more consistent light dispersion and doesn't require as much vertical distance. If you find yourself selecting between these two lights, keep these things in mind. But ultimately, look at the listing price. I would never spend $50 more for either of these lights. I've seen so much price fluctuation on these things that I can't officially say if either of these are worth the price. Instead, I recommend trying a site like CamelCamelCamel.com. This site will allow you to track the pricing history of an Amazon listing. This will help you to be sure you're getting a fair price rather than buying during an unusual price spike. All right, well, I've got to pack this lettuce up, get it inside, get it in the fridge. So I've got my work cut out for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, happy gardening.